Welcome. I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Samasa in Paninian Grammar. And this is the first course. We begin the lecture with the recitation of the Mangala Charana. Vishvesham Satchidanandam Vandeham Yokhilan Jagat Chari Karti Bari Bharti Sanjari Harti Leelaya Vishvesham Satchidanandam Vandeham Yokhilan Jagat Chari Karti Bari Bharti Sanjari Harti Leelaya We have been studying the rules of compounding in Paninian grammar. After having studied the basic theoretical explanations of the process of compounding, we noted down the sequence in which the derivation of compound happens in the Paninian system. We also noted the rules that trigger certain operations one after another in a particular sequence. We said that semantic conditioning is at the base where samarthya is needed for the process of compounding to begin. Then we say that the name of the entire process, namely samasa, is stated. Then we studied the necessary condition for the process of compounding, namely sahasupa. We also said that this sutra sahasupa is interpreted by the later Paninian grammatical tradition in a very generic manner to mean and also to account for any subanta being interrelated to any other subanta and getting compounded. We then noted down the stage where the Alaukika Vigraha takes place and the Samasa Saudhnya happens, after which the sup is deleted by the Sutra Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho. Before that, we also noted that the Purva Pada Nirdharana also happens. After the Purva Pada Nirdharana, there is also the Samasanta Pratyaya. Now, after the deletion of the sups, we then do the morphological operations on the Purvapada, some phonological operations also. And then we also saw some other Varana karyas like Shatva and Natva and Sandhi. And then also what remains is the Swara karya, the accent. And this is what we will be dealing in this particular lecture. We have stated this in detail in the earlier course, namely Introduction to Paninian Grammar. We said that compositionality functions at three levels in Sanskrit and Paninian Grammar, namely Artha, Shabda and Swara. The compositionality at all these three levels has a one-to-one -one correspondence with each other. Artha to Shabda and Shabda to Swara. One unit of Artha corresponds with one unit of Shabda and also one unit of Swara. Division of Artha in that one unit corresponds to the division in Shabda and also the Swara. So if we have Vakya Swara, Vakya Swara 1, then it is composed of Padasvara 1 plus Padasvara 2 and Padasvara 3. This Padasvara 1 is composed of Prakritiswara 1 
प्लस प्रत्यय स्वर वन पद स्वर टू इज कंपोज ऑफ प्रकृति स्वर टू एंड प्रत्यय स्वर टू एंड पद स्वर थ्री इज कंपोज ऑफ प्रकृति स्वर थ्री एंड प्रत्यय स्वर थ्री नाउ द पद स्वर इज कंपोज ऑफ प्रकृति स्वर एंड प्रत्यय स्वर एंड द प्लस साइन ओवर हियर इज शोन इन ब्लू कलर्स to distinguish it with the plus sign that is put in between these brackets of padasvaras so this plus sign says that prakriti swara and pratyaya swara they both get merged together and there is one padasvara that emerges that is the implication of this plus sign similarly the padasvaras once they are at the level of the output from the prakriti swara and pratyaya swara they come into contact with each other and then there is something else that is brought about so pada swara 1 plus 2 and plus 3 this brings about the vakya swara and this plus sign which is put in red indicates this additional accent that happens only at the sentence level when there is a combination of pada swaras this additional accent cannot be ascribed to any of the padas it is ascribed to the combination of padas namely the vakyas and therefore such a swara is ascribed as the vakya swara so if we have these six sentences gramam gachati ramah shalam gachati ramah ग्रामं गच्छति मोहन शालां गच्छति मोहन शालां पश्यति राम एंड ग्रामं पश्यति मोहन इन दीज सेंटेंसेस वी नोटिस दैट देर आर सम एक्सेंट मार्क्स एंड ग्रामम हैज गॉट द इनिशियल उदात्त देर फॉर दिस अनुदात्त बिकम्स स्वरित there is no mark in gachati and ramaha is udat at the end so this anudat is shown as anudat now gramam gachati ramaha has got a peculiar accent if we split ramam gachati and ramaha we shall get separate accents of each individual words let us see what those accents are so the prakriti pratyaya swaras amongst all these words are the following grama is adyudat gama is accented rama is finally accented shala is adyudat and mohana is antodat drasha is accented am which is a pratyaya which is not accented a which is also a pratyaya in gachati is not accented t is also not accented su is not eligible for getting any accent because there is no vowel that is visible in the form now when we join the prakriti and pratyaya together that is grama plus am we get gramam now grama has got initial udat in this form am has got anudatta now this anudatta and this anudatta there is ami purvaha the purva rupa sandhi so anudatta plus anudatta is resultant anudatta so this a is an anudatta which follows this udatta therefore this becomes a swarita now this gama is udatta this a is anudatta this t is anudatta obviously this retains the accent so in gachati we have ga as udat and because this is anudat which comes immediately after the udat this becomes a swarit and this anudat remains without any mark so we have gachati of this form ramaha is finally accented in shalam once again the same process happens and shalam remains initially accented mohanaha also is finally accented and pashyati is also initially accented and therefore pashyati also has got the same accent as we have it in gachati 
So these are the Pada accents composed out of the Prakriti and Pratyaya. So as you notice, this is the Prakriti, this is the Pratyaya. Prakriti has got an accent, Pratyaya has got an accent. When they are joined together, there is one accent for both of them. Here there are three constituents. So each one of them has got one accent. And when they are joined together and they are made up in one unit, there is only one accent. Similar is the case with all other elements. Now when we join those elements in the form of a sentence, this is what we get. So gramam is initially accented, gachati is also initially accented and ramaha is finally accented. So now if we write Gramam Gachati Ramaha, this is how it will be, however, written. So now what happens over here is that the Pada accents are of a particular kind, but when they get joined in the form of a sentence like Gramam Gachati and Ramaha, now this is a sentence. Here the word Gachati comes immediately after Gramam. And therefore now, as a sentential accent, as a vakyasvara, because this gachati comes immediately after a subanta, so the Paninian Sutra Tinga Tingaha applies, Atingantat Param Tingantam Nihanyate, and all the vowels become unaccented, which are shown here. So, Gramam Gachati Ramaha, it will be of this kind, this is the sentential accent. But if we write gachati in the initial position, then we can retain the Pada accent of Gachati in this particular form. Gachati, Gramam and Ramaha. This will be the accent then. Or Gachati, Ramo, Gramam. This will be the sentential accent then. The point is that the Pada accents are of a particular kind. They come from the adjoining of the Prakriti and Pratyaya accents. However, when we join the Padas, there is another additional sentential Swara, Vakya Swara, that takes place and as a result in the first case we have Gachati without any Udatta whereas in the Pada accent Gachati is initially accented. So this is the Vakya Swara. After having explained what is a Vakya Swara and what is the Swara Karya, let us now study the significance of Swarakarya in Samasa. In Paninian grammar, such compositionality also works in the process of compounding. Accents of constituents are taken into account and in the process of merging, only one of them is retained as the accent of the newly merged or formed unit. There are two units minimum and each one will have its own accent, but when they merge together, there will be and there has to be only one accent. The question is which one of them, and then that is an additional uh, accent that is part of the process of compounding. By default, the accent of the semantic head should be retained, but this is followed loosely in the usage of Sanskrit. There are several exceptions where the semantic non-head also retains the accent and we shall study this aspect in brief later on in the course. So we have a Sutra Samasasya 61.2.23, the final Sutra of 6.1 and this continues in the entire 6.2 which consists of 199 Sutras. What Samasasya means is that the final vowel in the compound is accented. This is over and above the accent of the constituents of the compound as we shall see in the example of Raja Purusha. So Samasasya is the by default rule. This is also an Adhikara Sutra which governs the entire 6.2 which means that the accent on compounds is stated in 6.2. Here is an example. So we have Radnya Purusha Gachati. So the word Radnyaha has got an initial accent. The word Purushaha has got 
also an initial accent. So now, because this is a sentence, and Radnyaha has got Ra Udat, and this A uh, as Anudat, and this should be then shown as Swarita as is shown here, but because this U is Udat, so this Anudat is shown as Anudat, and then this Anudat U is shown as Swarita. This is Anudat, but it is shown without any sign because it does not follow, it does not precede any Udat. This Gachati, which is a Tinganta form, which comes immediately after a sup, so Tinga Tinga applies and there is no accent at all on Gachati. So we have Radnya Purusha Gachati with these accents and if we write the Alaukika Vigraha because Radnya and Purusha are semantically related and the speaker intends to combine them together in the form of a compound. So we write the Alaukika Vigraha of this kind, Radnyaha Purushaha Gachati. Now we write Radnyaha with Nya as Svarit, A as Svarita and Purusha of this kind and Gachati with all the Anudatas. Now we write Rajan plus Nas plus Purusha plus Su in the Prakriti Pratyaya format where we show Rajan as Adyudatta and Purusha also as Adyudatta. Now we proceed and delete the subs. Rajan plus Nas, Purusha plus Su, sup are deleted. So we have Rajan plus 0 plus Purusha plus 0. So the, these zeros, they are counted in a manner and then we have Rajan and Purusha. Now this no also gets deleted and so we have Raja and Purusha. Now we have Ra Udatta and Pu Udatta, two Udattas. Since this is a Tatpurusha compound, generally the semantic head is the Uttarapada. So generally the Uttarapada would retain the accent. That means this Pu would retain its Udatta and this Udatta will lose its status of an Udatta. However, this does not happen and we see that overriding all these Udattas, Samasasya plays an important role and over here the in the compound Raja Purusha, we see that the final vowel is accented. So Raja Purusha is finally accented, followed by Su, and then we get Raja Purusha Gachati, part of the sentence where Raja Purusha is finally accented and Gachati is also non-accented and in the last uh, stage it is shown as having no mark of an accent. So this is how the Svarakarya functions in the Samasa and the overriding accent which is the accent of the Samasa which takes place which is also quite similar with what happens in the sentence. In the Bahuvrihi however by default the Purvapada retains its accent. The Sutra is Bahuvriho Prakritya Purvapadam 6 to 1. The meaning is, in the Bahurihi compound, the Purvapada retains its original accent or earlier accent. In the Bahurihi compound, the accent of the Purvapada is retained as the accent of the newly formed Bahurihi compound. That is the meaning. So here we have the meaning, one who loves the world, Priyam Vishpam Yasya Saha written without accents over here and with accents over here where pre is accented and v is accented. Now the Alavakika Vigraha is Priya Su Vishva Su and so Pratipadika Saudhnya happens and so now the Sups are deleted by 2471. So we have Priya and Vishva where both the Padas have initial accents but now when they get merged together then obviously one of them will have to lose its status and it is this Uttarapada with which loses its Udatta and it is this Purvapada which retains its Udatta so we get Priya Vishwa with the initial Udatta. So to summarize the accent is a very important feature noted down by Paninian grammar on minute parts of speech. 
the accent compositionality corresponds with that of the meaning and the word form. The newly derived compound form gets one accent. This is one of the constituent accent in many cases, but in many other cases it is something new overriding the constituent accents, indicating the non-compositional nature of the compound which is something similar to what the vakya is according to the grammarians. Given x a x plus y a y as the accent input, where a x is the accent on x and a y is the accent on y, the outputs could be described as x y a x or x y a y or x y a z, where z is completely different out of x and y. So x y a x means accent of x retained, x y a y means accent of y retained and x y a z means both the accents of x and y are not applicable and something else is stated by the sutra. These are the texts referred to in order to explain the Swarakarya in this particular lecture. Thank you very much for your patience.